does it? A full time job. Yeah. Good thing <laughs> neither of us are working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell me what you have. So, it's so funny. How's it, everybody? And welcome to The Daily Pigeon. My name's Andy Bumatai. And I'm James Amani. And if you're joining us on the television show for the first time, yes, we edit this out of a podcast that we do live on the internet, simul blasting into about eight platforms. That's why it says podcast up there, okay? So, uh, but the TV show part, you know, we always have to explain that, you know, because if you ever see, like, all of a sudden, you know, somebody's name pop up on the screen like this, oh, wait, hold on, let me uh, get, out, uh, get our names out of the way. If you see someone's name pop up on the screen like this, that's because I'm bringing them in from the live chat yes. that we do, yes. right? 3 Not, p.m.? 3 p.m. Uh, Hawaii Standard Time uh, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitch, <laughs> eight different platforms. I like that. Multi-blasting. Multi-blasting. Yeah, so you can join us live so you can be in this chat room. Yeah, right here. See, this is what the chat looks like, okay? You know, you see all the people here, and you take, take for instance, here's Darlene S. If I click on her, she ends up on the screen. So that's what's going on when you see that, right? And here, look, here's Buddy Freaky going, Hey, aloha, I'm back from Maui. Um, uh, Buddy Freaky was just on Maui, and he's saying, counting down the days till I go back to that amazing place. Mm. Yeah, mahalo, buddy. I'm glad uh, you had good fun, because he was counting down the time. And, oh, uh, two more weeks to Maui, you know, and he started months ago, so... And now it starts all over again. Now it starts to start that countdown timer again. Okay. Three hundred something now. <laughs> hey, I have a, I have a, a, a news um, item. What we do is we clip news items and editorialize yes. them. But this one's kind of interesting, James, because mm. what it's about is hikers who get lost and need to be rescued. The legislature wants to charge them the money that it costs for the the rescue services. Ooh. I know. So let's let's take a look at that. A proposal moving along in the legislature looking to deter hikers from trespassing close oh, trails or dangerous behaviors on them the by having them repay <laughs> for their search and rescue. You get to keep uh, all the chicken responders as well as the community they go out there and they risk their own lives to find people she that on decide the to go off the trails. And those signs are there for a reason because there could be danger on the other side. Signs like these highlighting the trails in green. The proposal says those know, who disregard signs like these and go off trailing and are in need of search and rescue may have to pay it back. Ooh. I wouldn't disagree with that. If you go Look off this, the trail, I love and, this. you don't have to, to take up resources to get rescued. It's probably fair if it's a trail that, you know, the search and rescue teams aren't uh, actively patrolling. One hiker tells actively me she is patrolling? noticing more people taking risks that? on trails and going on this. areas not permitted simply to snap a photo for social media. Mm -hmm. yeah, There's a I lot of people Instagram. that kind of abuse it and they go off and they do crazy things. So it would be a good thing. Although there is some opposition to this proposal, including yeah, this, Honolulu this Police Chief anything. Joe Logan. Look at this. Part of his testimony to the state Senate's Public Safety Committee says the HPD opposes this bill as there is no existing mechanism to seek reimbursement for these situations. Yeah. In addition, it may deter <laughs> or delay prompt them. notification of first responder agencies by persons who may need to be rescued. That's the talk that we need to have. But you need to have How a mechanism a place, such as a bill like this as we have the conversation. Look at this. Look at this. You know, there's always solutions. We know what the problem is. we got to come up with solutions, and we need to do it this together. Fell off. The bill is expected Ooh. to cross over to the House, <clears throat> and Senator DeCoy hoping this bill has a different fate than other similar proposals you that know. have failed in the past. Max Rodriguez, KHO wow. News, working for Hawaii. I, are you a hiker? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't think. I, do I have to answer that, uh, or should I just leave the show? <laughs> yes. 
Only hikers allowed. I, I, no, I am definitely not a hiker. Same. In fact, I, I know my, my daughter, uh, she loves to go camping, mm. right? And she always says, Dad, let's go camping. And I said, you know, honey, I just can't go camping, you know, while I'm paying a mortgage. <laughs> you know, because it's like, it's like practicing to be homeless. I, I, I just... Right and on the and the people out there on the trails. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Wait, look at this. Let's go get an Instagram shot and end up in a helicopter. I don't know, man. Yeah, I wonder how much they would charge. Like, do you, did they say? Oh, it costs us this much gas, and there was seven uh, rescuers, so <laughs> they their hourly rate is this. Well, the, I, I don't know when when I was shooting, um, you know, making films and stuff mm -hmm. a helicopter is three hundred dollars an hour period and it's probably five hundred now because it's been a while since mm -hmm. i've rented one but so that's five hundred and you know how long does it take to get up there the back and mm -hmm. then, then then you like have all the people it's got to be thousands Oof. it's got to be so thousands thank you uh if this does pass because it's another excuse for when people say hey you want to go hiking and they, oh you know i just can't afford it you know <laughs> Well, not only that, bro. You know, you know that little basket that they uh, drag. Imagine you said, you said little basket, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it would look like a little coffin. I'm saying, go, oh, bro. You know, uh, we, we need the back basket extender. <laughs> <laughs> we can just double up on the baskets for. Oh, so they're gonna have regular basket and then Samoan basket. <laughs> they have the Samoan <laughs> basket. It's like a, it's like a, a menu. Okay. Well, <laughs> What nationality the the brother? Oh, Japanese. Oh, it's only four hundred. Samoy. I saw Smeri said this one over here. Fifteen hundred. We need the seven XL basket <laughs> to Dennis. get this guy. How are you, Dennis Grau? Right there. We've done a lot of shows together. Ah, uh, yeah, I see that. Okay. I don't know if you specifically go against the sign posted and willfully trespass. <clears throat> I feel like there should be consequences. I do too. Yeah, a little, little pa'i or, or sasa, as the Samoans would say. Just a couple of cracks, you know. A couple of cracks. You why, why you leave the trail? I learn. told you, follow the chicken. I guess they want some like hiking bouncers or something to keep people on the trail. <laughs> uh, -oh. uh oh, you're going to get emails. <laughs> You gotta get emails. <laughs> Excuse me, maybe you should stay on the trail because we don't want to give the helicopter more business. What accent is that? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't recognize it. Folks, thank you for joining us on the Daily Pigeon. We'll be right back with our special guest, Kermit Appeal, comic extraordinaire, after this. And we are back. Thank you for rejoining The Daily Pigeon. My name's Andy Bumata. And I'm James Money. And we have a special guest. Yes, we do. A comic who many have seen on Dry Bar Comedy. He's uh, coming to us from what, Seattle? Seattle, area? Washington. Seattle, Washington, where he tours the country, packing um, houses all over the country. Please help me welcome Mr. Kermit Appeal. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me on. And uh, I know you've been waiting to ask the question. No, I'm not a hiker. It's very <laughs> obvious. Um, although I, I will say this, uh, I, I do hike depending on where I find parking. Some yeah. Sometimes it can be called a hike. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. especially because you go to youth sports games. <laughs> yes. And that's a hike. That's a hike. Yeah, okay. Or uh, <clears throat> or the uh, blue note if you don't want to pay the twenty dollars oh, yeah. for parking. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know the valet guys and they go, Hey, big James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Keep it in front, boys. <laughs> uh hey Kermit, tell the story about why your name is spelled the way it is, Kermit. Um well, well, first of all, I, I want to say I wasn't named after the frog. Uh, I don't want to, my, because it looks bad to my parents. Sesame Street went national when I was two, and um, and so my, uh, oh. so my, yeah, my dad was watching football the morning my mom went into labor, and yeah. there was a there was a linebacker for the Miami Dolphins named Kermit Johnson, who had a really good game that day. Wow. Um, yeah. So so lucky <laughs> me is my point, um, but. I will say this, I'm glad he wasn't watching the Chicago Bears because they had Dick Butkus. <laughs> <laughs> this would be an so, entirely different interview if it was. <laughs> oh, it would, yeah, it'd be an interview about psychology. Um, 
<laughs> and, and you're probably glad your dad wasn't a, a you know a fan of ping pong. <laughs> You'll be chow lin. <laughs> So, so they, so when they decided to go with Kermit, cause it was this unique name that nobody had. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but my mom spelled it differently because she didn't like K E R M I T because she didn't like it sound like Kermit a eh, Kermit. Right. So she, she changed it to Kermit, but it doesn't matter because everybody pronounces it the way everybody else spells it, but mm -hmm. it was her thing to get a more E sound in it. And, and how many people have said, and how helpful was the name Kermit? with a Hawaiian last name in becoming a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> we should book that guy whose name we can't pronounce or remember. <laughs> you know, I was expecting, oh, we, we went with Kermit because we didn't want him stumbling over a peel. <laughs> a, a, a pie, a, a pie -o, a, a, a pa -o. oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I will say this though, it is it is it is a different name, but I, I will say that whenever a, a social media or some kind of thing comes up where you have to register for a name, Kermit yeah. Appeal is always available all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true because James Main, I'm like 2000 James <laughs> Main, I think. Oh, James Main. Well, but. <laughs> You know, as Andy Boomerang, right? <laughs> when I was growing up, I, I couldn't. I said, "Where are you? Where, where are you getting the G in this, Andy B B Boomerang?" <laughs> you know, like, oh my goodness. It's funny because Kermit, the way yours is spelled and pronounced, is the the pigeon way of saying Kermit. Hey, what, what's that frog's name again? Which one? <laughs> Kermit. <laughs> Kermit. Yeah, Kermit, that's the but one. He, but he, but he uh, predates the frog. Yeah, that's true. That's the thing. The frog is named after him. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Should be coming your way. No, I'm, I'm yep. sure they were watching one of your shows when they were, you know, be coming up with that whole <laughs> like, hmm. sesame concept mm -hmm. and went, you know what? I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, and they saw you on dry bar and said, it's not yeah. easy being clean. <laughs> uh, ooh, you need salon pass for that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did it. We're, we do this thing where, you know, if you reach too hard for the joke, you've got to put salon pass on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That baga yeah. is so. Now, you know, uh, th that's another thing, Kermit. You know, uh, one of the things um, that I think a lot of people appreciate is that you work clean. Mm -hmm. Do you always work clean? Yeah, you know, it was the thing when I started um, that I, I realized comedy was the first thing I ever tried hard at. It was it was the first thing I ever put any kind of effort into. And uh, I realized that if I if I allowed myself to use kind of the smoke and mirrors, I would do it. And yeah. and so I noticed that the comics that I like, the comics I admired uh, could do sets on television. That's why I was seeing them. And I thought, well, that must be the way to go then. And then and then I, I really enjoyed it because I worked harder on bits than I normally would have. And then, and then I started getting different kinds of work that you don't get if you're not clean. Yeah. And I just thought, well, that helps fill the calendar. So it, it's just, it's just one of those things where um, it, it was a way to work. It wasn't like, like, I like all kinds of comedy, no matter, me you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I just noticed that for me, just from a work standpoint, it, it went really well. And then I, you know, then when I, when I, Years later, when I performed in, in Hawaii or whatever, family members could come and I wouldn't have to worry, you know, oh, I'm going to say that in front of my grandma or anything like that. You know, uh, even the dry bar comedy thing, that's what they're famous for, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. is works clean. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it was a great thing to do. And, and, and I was in the first batch of comics they recorded. I was in the first season. And... They were saying, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna buy Facebook ads, and we're gonna do all these things." And and we and we were like, "Oh, good luck with that. We've bought Facebook ads. We know what that what that's like." Or, <laughs> you know, and they did it. They 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 found a market, and you know, we have uh, those of us in the first season have some some that have you know, I have one clip that has twenty four million hits, which is just insane to think about. But they did what they said they were gonna do. Yeah. And they also were right that there's a market for clean comedy. Although you yeah. want to hear something funny, so uh, a lot of the a lot of the cruise ships now, my cruise ship agent actually had to tell me, "Hey, uh, it's weird to say this, but you're too clean for cruise ships now because they want they want a late show, they want an adult I've show." I've heard that. 
I have heard yeah. that. You know, here, here's yeah. my too clean story. Um, Rodney Dangerfield was doing a special, and he came to me and he said, "Hey, listen, Andy, we want to use you on the special, but you're too clean. <laughs> you, you're gonna come off like Peter Pan compared to everybody else. Can you add some swear words?" And I said, "Right, right. Where?" He said, "He goes, okay, well, sorry," and he went with Sam Kennison instead. Wow. Yeah. So that was pink. Yeah. Wow. What. Uh, Whatever happened to that guy? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, he died. He did an impression. <laughs> He's dead now. I, <laughs> well, I was going to say. I'm, I'm oh, joking. I know. I, it's so hard not to go to the car crash joke. Sure. You know? Oh, he went out, had too much to drink, and crashed. And, uh, I know. It was but a I'm, terrible thing. Yeah, but there is. A, there is hey, kind Kermit, of. A, we're gonna. We're okay. gonna. Uh, there's the, okay. the whole television thing here. I got about uh, 12 seconds left, uh, and I want to say thank you so much for being on the Daily Pigeon, and we will be right back with comic Kermit Appeal after this. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Andy Bumatai. and I'm James Money, and he's wearing the same shirt as in the title sequence. <laughs> <laughs> That's how buttoned up brother is. Yes. I'm telling you right there. And speaking of buttoned up, I don't know how we got our next guest. This brother <laughs> is, you know, all over the country. In fact, he's on his way to Utah to mm -hmm. do some sold out shows. Please help me welcome Comet Kermit. Come. Come on, I can do this. Comet <laughs> Kermit Appeal. <laughs> Tom Hello. <Tester. laughs> Hi, Kermit. It should be pointed out that the shows in Utah aren't sold out because of me. I, I, I'm opening for Brian Regan, who's a very well-known comedian. So just just full disclosure, I didn't want people to show up at Utah and say, oh, you're only doing 20 minutes and another guy comes out for an hour. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, nobody tells the, the you know oh, the, the Kansas guess. City Chiefs, say, hey, the offensive lineman didn't score any touchdowns. <laughs> They're part of the team, and you're part of that team that sold out that show. Well, I'm like the water boy, but yes, I'm part of the team. <laughs> He's part of the team. I got to tell you, bro, you know, you can take the local brother out of Hawaii, but you cannot take that humble brother no. out of, you know, I mean, that, who else no. would do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, we're sold out. Get your tickets now. Good seats still available. But no. Yeah. So tell me about um, how often you get to play uh, the Kihoalo. Um, I've watched your broadcast, you do the slack key, and, you know, sometimes you just, hey, I'm going to rehearse here, you play it loose. How did that come about? Basically during COVID. So, well, I should, I should back up. When, when I first started going on the road, my hobby became my job. So I needed a new hobby, and, and back when I was growing up uh, and uh, going to Yolani, I, I occasionally play guitar, but just strum a few chords. Yeah. And... Uh, when I first went on the road, I was in this really scary motel. And you know, Andy, when you first go on the road, some of the, Ugh. some of the hotels, oh. And so I just needed to get out of the motel. So I was walking, I was, I took, went for a walk and there was a pawn shop with a guitar for $40. And I thought wow. I, I, I got to get a new hobby. It was not a good guitar by the way, but, um, and so I went and bought it. And then I would take the guitar with me on the road just for sanity. So I would, if, if I just was, was getting tired of the road or, you know, kind of getting frustrated about something, I would just play in the hotel room and I would bring along, you know, Hawaiian CDs or tapes and I, I play along. So I started, I started learning how to play one time, one time I, I, the club owner picked me up at the airport and I was carrying this guitar and, <laughs> and it was the first time I'd worked this club and I get in and he goes, Oh crap. You're not one of them damn guitar comics. Are you? <laughs> Jazz Kaner just went, wait, wait, hold on. Right, right. I mean, first of all, like, guitar comics are really good. There's a bunch of really good yeah, ones. But, sure. but second of all, I love that he felt duped because I sent him a tape that had no music in it. And he was oh. like, oh, this guy, this guy, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I, uh, so I just play it on the road. And then uh, during COVID, during lockdown, I couldn't do comedy. I couldn't go on the road. I couldn't do anything. And, and uh and so I'd just be playing my guitar, and I saw a friend of mine who just turned on his Facebook Live and started playing, and that's where it started. And now it's it's you know every Wednesday at six p.m. Pacific time, if I'm if I can, if I'm not working, if I'm if I'm in town, I'll I'll do a I do an hour of music, and man, it's it's been great because I, I I've played you know uh, 
a ton more songs than I ever knew. And, and it's made me a better musician because I got to I got to prepare for them because I don't want to play the same songs every week. Yeah. And it's been an amazing experience. And it's got a really small but very, very uh, loyal and kind fan base. And they've developed a drinking game. You're talking about the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian <laughs> boy being humble. Yeah. There's a drinking game that's developed. And I'm not kidding. They'll they'll drink if I apologize, make a mistake or start a song over. <laughs> And we have drunks wandering the streets yeah. everywhere in America. So, so there are some songs or, or there are some shows where I'll say, hey, you know, when, I, when I'm talking about the song on Facebook, I'll say, hey, you might want to uh, make sure you're at home or have a designated driver because there's some songs that are tricky in the show. Cause, <laughs> cause, but, here's, a, but I, here's, uh, here's Jeff Pace. He says, Kermit Apio doesn't just play. He goes into the history and culture of the song. He's uh, amazing. Nice. That's very nice. So, so I do. So I realized that a lot of the people who are watching weren't from Hawaii. Some people knew me from comedy, so they didn't know anything about, you know, the music. So before I do the song, I translate everything that the song says. I, I do a translation or if there's a story behind the song that should be known, I, I, I talk about that. And, and so, yeah, it's been really fun for me because there are songs that, that I didn't uh, know as well. Like I know the kind of the translation, but now I've gotten to learn a lot about the song and who wrote it and why. And, but, uh, and also I've learned that a lot of Hawaiian songs, they're very naughty. They're not just about the mountains and the valleys, the mountains and the valleys, <laughs> well, they mean something and else. Valleys, but not the ones you're thinking of. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> now, how, how much of what you play is in the traditional tuning? How much is in open G or, you know, the slack key? Um, I'd say a, a, about half and half. I, nowadays, you know, after about a year of doing it, I started bringing in more songs uh, that weren't Hawaiian, just just learning to do other other songs. And so those I'm using the standard guitar. But I have two guitars on either side of me in the show. One is always in slack key. One is always in standard. So I don't have to tune uh -huh. between the two. Yeah. Um, so they're about about half. I always open the show with the slack key. I just kind of uh, I just kind of play a little bit and talk to people as they enter into the into the the show and then and then and then after a while i'll play a couple of slacky songs it always opens on slacky and uh, and then occasionally ukulele i have a, a i'll do i'll do one or two songs on ukulele just about every week wow look at this here yeah. um <coughs> ulu hawaii live says oh yeah hawaiian music is kind of <laughs> yeah. naughty <Hula> <laughs> uh, i remember i remember the... looking at a song and i actually said this to myself i i always thought that was a chicken and i realized <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, you know, you, you and Corey uh, uh, jam a lot, or do you still do that? Yeah, yeah, Corey. We did a gig last week at the, it was funny because it was the Sons of Norway, which is, you know, this uh, group that's been in this building for many years and generations. And they hired Corey and I to play Hawaiian music for uh, for two hours, and it was a blast. Wow. Yeah. You're getting, well, yeah. watch out because if it becomes, if it's no longer your hobby, you have to, you know, all of a sudden you'll be crocheting or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and well, and Corey, Corey's been a great, like he is an yeah. amazing Sly Key player. He's, he is mastered level. And so I've learned so much and I love that. Uh, if I'm playing with him, I can just grab the, the standard tuning guitar and just strum the chords. And I know there's going to be these beautiful fills in there and play ukulele. And he's there. It's amazing to play with him. It's awesome. Good to have backup. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, excuse me, how, how you make the D? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you uh, so much for uh, tuning in to the Daily Pigeon. Uh, we have more of Kermit Appeal coming up. And... Um, there are other uh, selections, I know, but today you might want to hang around. We'll be right back. And we start. <laughs> oh, folks, let me tell you, you got to join us on the Internet side. 3 p.m. <laughs> Hawaii Standard mm -hmm. Time, uh, weekdays on in most um, social media uh, platforms so you can see the behind the scenes yes. as we're making this TV show because we just had a conversation with our guest Kermit Appeal. Mm -hmm. Why, and he talked about, he's talking about how you know, he needed a new hobby because his hobby became his job, stand-up comic. So he decided to do it. Now he's getting good enough at that. Soon, I got a feeling he'll have a crocheting channel. <laughs> Please help me welcome Kermit Appeal. How's it, Kermit? 
<laughs> How's that? Thank you for having me. I, by the way, I want I want to say so. You talk about the music uh, yeah. in 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 November. A bunch of uh, really amazing musicians come up and they have the Seattle Slack Key Festival. Oh, so wow. so one night someone asked me, "Hey, you want? It's, there's a dinner at Kona Kitchen. Can you play for maybe an hour and a half, just little dinner music?" And I went, "Yes, absolutely." And I didn't realize it was for the VIPs who would have dinner with the people from the Slack Key Festival. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the best yeah. players at this yes. thing. Yes, Jeff oh. Peterson, Sonny Lim, like oh, all sure. these people there. I couldn't believe it, and I'm like, "Oh, this is who I'm playing." And so my friend, I asked him, "Can you sit in with me and play bass?" Yeah. And I and when I found out what the gig was, I told him, "This is like, like let's say you're at the NBA All Star Game, and you're standing in front of all the players, and you go, watch me shoot a free throw.'" <laughs> <laughs> Check out my dunk. <laughs> oh, man, no pressure. How did it go? It, it, you know what? The, the audience was uh, very nice because they're Slack Key fans, right? Sure. So I was playing I was playing almost the whole show in Slack Key. And so they were very, very generous. They were very kind. And, that sort of, and I'll tell you, Jeff Peterson was so sweet afterwards. But, yeah. the, but that's just him. He's just a nice guy. He was very Great complimentary. Guy. And but just a sweet human being. But but even I was like, yeah, you don't have to compliment me. You're you know, you're, you're, I know what I, I know how I can play. Right. And I'm not horrible, but I'm not you guys, you know. But you know what? And, uh, I'll bet you they appreciated that you got up there and you did your thing. And it's just like when someone's trying to learn Hawaiian, you don't put them down if their pronunciation is a little off. You appreciate <laughs> that they're trying to learn. Yeah. 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 And, and then the fact that people in other cities are, are, are still doing Slack Key. And, you know, that's a good thing, too, to them, right? Because yeah. they know people in Hawaii play, but they don't know how many people in Seattle play or, or you know, yeah. other cities. So, Well, the, you know, I, I when I was talking to uh, Robert Cosimero, I interviewed him at one point, and he said the Hawaiian culture is almost more robust, you know, amongst the people who have been, you know, migrated, mm. <laughs> as yeah. I like to put it, you know? Well, we, we miss it, right? We it's it's something that we have to make make the effort to to see and to to be a part of, right? Because when we look outside, it's thirty five degrees and raining. It's not, you, you know what I mean. So for us, it's 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 something that really is important to us, especially especially to me. You know, um, when when people see your last name, local people, you know, let's say they're in Seattle, they're new there, and they go, "Oh, I'll be all, oh, brother, gonna be all local. We we'll go check out some local kind of comedy." Did they ever get to the show and go, oh, I don't know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, a little bit because because really to to some of the uh, the uh, the the more distant relatives, I sound like Game of Thrones to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I sound like Jon Snow. Um, <laughs> and well, so okay, so I was very lucky. I, I know I'm going to sound name droppy here, but I was very yeah. lucky to open open for Dave Chappelle at Blaisdell Center, yeah. um, and uh, and I had a I had a great time. But I could definitely feel the first because they introduce they're they're there to see Chappelle, not anybody else. And, and then I get introduced, right? And they mention that I'm from the area, and there was a be, a beginning part where. Where I kind of I kind of realized, especially that front area, that VIP area, where they were like, "Who's that? I, he? He's from here, but I don't know who he is, and he doesn't yeah. he doesn't sound like he's from here." And um, and <laughs> basically, <laughs> and so right, so I so early in the show, I said I said, "Hey, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in Eva Beach," and there was a bunch of claps way up top, and I said, "Yeah, of course the Eva Beach people are in the highest level, of course, right?" <laughs> and and then that waiting that, to come down. <laughs> right, right, right. Trying to sneak down to the hundred level. <laughs> so, so it was it was one of those things where I had to I had to really kind of prove it in a way because yeah. I don't you know speak and I don't want to like there there are things where I might if I'm talking about my dad I would I'll speak the way he speaks but I don't want to force in pigeon material just to make sure you know I'm from here right. Yeah. So you're right, Andy. It is a thing where where I do have to kind of prove that I that I am from there in a way. And I don't mind. It's I look, I, I get it. And, um, but, but it's there, it's definitely there. But you know what, a, a lot of times, and you know, and, and James and I, we just did a show, right? Mm -hmm. We always say in Hawaii, they know you're from here because of, of the sensitivity you have to the cultures. 
you know, like we, we do Samoan jokes back and forth all the time, but right. you could do them in a room full of Samoans right. because, you know, and and if and that's the difference, I think, between the, the real local comments and the people that come in and go, oh, those Filipinos sure talk funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, here, Music in, uh, is Life says, hey, Kermit, have you played in the Wahine detuning? I have. I don't do a lot in it. I, I play in Wahine C because it's a it's a good uh, singing for me. I, I played it. I played the Wahine D, um, but yeah, I, I mostly stay in Taro Patch and uh, Wahine C. <laughs> Lido says, "I love when locals talk pigeon, but still speak proper <laughs> English." <laughs> <laughs> well, what you know, when we're in Waikiki, James yeah. and I, again, we just did it. You know, you have to, sometimes you have to translate for the pigeon impaired. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, you adjust to the and, color and, you know, of and, the and, room. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I said, when I do my music show, I know that a lot of people watching the music show on Facebook are not from Hawaii. So mm -hmm. it, it must be kind of weird for the Hawaiians, you know, to hear me like, you know, this next song is about the, the wonderful flowers of, you know, what, of Kauai, you know, and here comes Hano Hano Hanale, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to, I don't want to pronounce the Hawaiian words wrong, but by the same token, yeah. I, you know, I, I, so it is, it's something I kind of dance with a lot. Oh, that's uh, funny. You know, and, and it's, you'd be, uh, amazed at how many people don't know hawaiians even had a language oh you have your own language yeah. well you think we yeah. made up aloha <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey when we come back um i want to talk to you about how the music thing has affected your stand-up and mm -hmm. how often you get to write new material as opposed to coming up uh you know with finger exercises in wahine c tuning <laughs> We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking to um, a comic from Hawaii, now in Seattle, and touring the country, and uh, playing a little slack key on the side. When we come back, thanks for joining us on The Daily Pigeon. Don't go away. <clears throat> and we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking to Kermit Appeal, and again, on the commercial break, he said something that had James and I cracking up. We're going to try to recreate it for you because we don't want the people watching on TV to miss out too much of the backstage action. So please help me welcome once again, Kermit Appeal. How's it, Kermit? Hello. So what we were, what we were talking about during the break was, um, you know, being out of material and on you're stage. on stage. Yeah. Your, your live performance, packed club, and you blank out. Where do most <laughs> comics go? We go. Hey, where are you guys from? That's that's the that's the go-to. That is. That's, that's the, I'm from Barstow. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that explains the tractor outside. You know, I mean, there's all the kind of things you do. That was fast. That was a good one. That's a good one. You know, you talk about those hell good, uh, those hell gigs, right? You know, in those little ho those little spooky hotels, right? I was in Barstow at like a Holiday Inn one time, and I go down to the restaurant to eat, right? And right in the middle of dinner, all of a sudden the lights drop, <laughs> and the stage lights up. I'm like, what the heck? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Filipino Elvis. And this guy gets up there and starts doing Elvis tunes in that oh, strongest man. Filipino accent ever. I almost fell on the... And now, supposed to end is schneer, and we have paced our final curtain. You know, I'm like, I lost it. Amazing. Oh, love me tender. <laughs> What what was uh, give me an example of a gig that stands out in your mind with oh man I gotta well, get an well, agent. Well, with what we're talking about, so one time I was doing this gig and I and I maybe had at that point twenty to twenty five minutes and I was doing this gig at a bar off the side of the it, it was a bar a lobby bar inside of a a, a, a quality inn and um <laughs> and and right off the freeway right and so and so there was about eight people but two of them were sitting at the bar not facing the show yeah. and the other six didn't really know there was comedy so it's kind of just one of those things where they 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 turn down the lights and they, they say hey uh you know we've got a big comedy show please welcome and so i'm in front of essentially six people 
Um, and, uh, and in those gigs, you don't hear laughter. So, so the material goes quicker, right? So you're trying yeah. to, you're trying to make sure you can still do the 25 because, because if you don't make it to the 25 window, you don't get paid. So you're trying to, oh. yeah. So you're trying not to burn materials about 15 minutes in I'm doing the, Hey, where are you guys from? And, and it's, I'm not good Here. enough at that point. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. I'm, you know, from, it doesn't matter. Right. Cause I don't have anything to say about it. Right. And yeah, so yeah. I'm trying to riff. I'm not doing very well. So I get, I, I'm just sort of, I get to my 25, I'm about to close and the, and the, and the bar manager, he's going like this to me, stretch, stretch, <laughs> because, Why? and I, and I said, stretch, I go, you want to see more of what's been happening for the last 25 <laughs> minutes? And, and he goes, oh my God. And then the funny thing more? is, he's yeah. The funny thing is, he's trying to do it in signals so as not yeah. to let the audience. There's six people just yell out whatever you have to say, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so he goes, he goes. The headliner's not here, and I went, wow. What? what? So yeah. So so I started doing anything like like you guys are talking about. Where are you from? You know, yeah. whatever. And um, and then I started getting laughs because I started completely making fun of how uncomfortable I was. I said, <laughs> I said, I said. I said, like, one thing I said, I said, if you guys hate watching this thing, just imagine what I feel like having to do this, right? <laughs> and, 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 and so I got to like, it was like 35 minutes in. And I said, I said, if he doesn't show up sh soon, I'm going to be doing like uh, uh, tributes. I'm going to be saying, you know, I think Jay Leno said it best when he said, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and now I don't to do, oh, that's too funny, man. I wound up doing, the headliner thought the show was at nine, but it was at eight. So I wound up doing 50 minutes. He came in at 10 to nine. I did 50 minutes with 25 minutes of material that oh. wasn't even going well. And at, 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 at one point I started doing stuff that I didn't do that night. Yeah. And I said, I said, folks, I'm about to do material that I decided I shouldn't do for this show. That's how bad this <laughs> material is. Like, like six people in a lobby bar. I thought, no, don't do those jokes. No, right? you want to burn that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right, right. And I wound up doing those, but they were kind of laughing in a way that they sort of were in, enjoying the sort of, you know, that I, that I sort of was honest about what it was. And so wow. the second half hour was actually a lot better. And it taught me a lot about hmm living in the moment and everything. But yeah, that, that was a horrible situation that wound up actually teaching me something. You know, I was in, I was in Las Vegas, right? And I was opening for Natalie Cole, okay? And uh, at this period, she was having some serious issues and often came in late and I got this one, right? <clears throat> One right. time she's just like you. I'm like, you know, you know, uh, 45 minutes past my comfort zone, right? So I do this thing where I say, you know, Natalie will be doing some material that her father did. And it's to me the best part of her show. So if you don't mind, I'd like to do some material my father did. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he was a welder, right? So I drop down, <laughs> turn the mic sideways, and go <laughs> on the thing. The band is falling out of their chairs. But it's one of those things where the, you know, the audience is like, what the heck is this? I just, you know, oh. Well, I, well, I got to say that, you know, I remember one time getting to share stories with you like this and hearing you tell these kind of stories that were similar to situations I had. Um, <laughs> And I know it's, it might get uncomfortable for you, but you're one of the reasons I do this. You're, you're one of the reasons I remember, I mean, cause there were, there were, when I was a kid, there were comedians, but, but nobody was doing that. Just stand up, man, just living out there with you and your words and your stories. And when I got your album, I listened to it all the time. And then your specials came out. So you're one of the reasons I do this. So, so when I hear you tell stories like this, it's just, it's the coolest thing to me, right? Oh, thank because, you, man. Oh, thank because you, it is. And I remember when we did that, when we, one time I got to sit with you and we were telling little road stories and I was just like, wow, Andy's been to that same horrible gig I did. You know, like, <laughs> it was, yeah, I, it was I the paved best. the way for bad gigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, I've been to Barstow and, and, and I mean, that's yeah. not something you brag about unless you hear Andy's been there too, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> It's a, it's, you know, it, they, they've got a Holiday Inn and a gas station and a lot of cabbage patches. Yes, yes. Oh, man, Barstow. Yeah, I've got to tell you. It's, you know, and, and, th and that's the one where, pe where people say, you know, I always wanted to know, where do people from Hawaii go for their honeymoon? <laughs> and that's my go-to answer. What, are you kidding? 
Barstow. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, Kermit? I got to tell you, we, we, we have one more segment, and it'll be a okay. six-and-a-half-minute segment as opposed to the eight that we've been doing, and I got a feeling it's going to fly by. <laughs> Thanks again for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We've got more of Kermit Appeal coming back after this. Okay, Kermit? Let's see your shaka, bro. There we go. Oh, me! <laughs> Don't go away. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking to Kermit Appeal. And again, during the break, a subject came up. What about the old comics compared to the new comics? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring in Kermit Appeal. And then I want to bring up uh, Michael uh, Seals. Um, comment. He says, what it would be the one thing missing from today's comedians mm -hmm. versus the old guys like Dean Martin, Richard Pryor, Rodney Dangerfield? Mm -hmm. What has changed since then, in your opinion, Kermit? In my opinion, it's just the pause, just waiting for that punch or holding, holding a look or a mug for the audience that's gone. And, and I get it because nowadays you got to compete for clicks. You know, you're the, you're, there are so many other things people could be watching, whether it's TV or on their phone or whatever. So comics don't pause anymore, but, but yeah, the old, the old Jack Benny, the old, the look, the hold, the look at the camera, the little motion. And, and you could feel the audience, he could get two, three laughs off of one punchline just by holding that look or that face that will not happen anymore. There's, there's no more pausing. And, you know, not that it's bad. It's the way it's the way things have gone, and it's it's a natural progression. But man, when you watch the old comics, uh, you know, even C Sid Caesar, as manic as he was, mm -hmm. he could hold a look, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just but back 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 then there were only three networks, and so you weren't competing with too many people, right? Uh, yeah. It's yeah, so it's it's not going to happen anymore. But I think the pauses I miss a lot. And and you know, social media has a lot to do with shortening people's attention spans. You know, you know, I, I heard a story of George Burns, right? And someone says, you got to pause more. And he goes, yeah, I know, but I'm up there and I'm nervous. I'm doing my act. And the guy hands him a cigar and says, go on with a lit cigar. After you tell your joke, shake a big old hit. And that became his, his shtick. Wow. You know, the, the cigar. You know, yeah. uh, and that happens, uh, in my not-so-humble opinion, to people, um, comics, who go, you know, i got to make a living. I'll be a radio personality, a DJ. And then they get into that um, um, silence is bad mentality. No dead air. No dead air. Right. I was in a, a station one time, and there was a big red light, and when there was dead air, it would flash. To, wow. to remind you, you should be always talking, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. I know, you know, I have a thing where I, I have a couple of times where I actually act out a punchline without words. And, <laughs> and I love doing it because it's, it's just something you don't, you don't see much anymore, yeah. but it's fun to just hold, hold that take or that look on the punchline, you know? And uh, like, I have, I have one, I have a bit where I, where I talk about when I was single, I, I asked a bank teller out. And, you know, and then I realized I just asked someone out who's looking at a computer view of my financial situation. Right. <laughs> and and I just kind of do this. <laughs> and yeah, and on, in a good audience, I can hold that. I can do that for yeah. a good 30 seconds. You know, but you, you know, I, and I, in my mind, I'm seeing you, you know, she's you're her. She looks down registers the amount <laughs> looks back at you right i mean right it's yeah. gold yeah yeah it's gold. and go ahead i was just going to say that that's my tribute tribute to the older mm -hmm. the older style of comedy that those looks those takes aren't done anymore so I, I have a few of them in the show for that reason you know we lost one of the masters of doing that here in hawaii melka bang mm. right yeah. I mean, I don't know if you've ever worked with Mel, but he does this thing where he does the Jack Benny where he looks. And especially yep. if he's on stage and somebody walks in late, all he has to do is stare at him and it's good for a minute and a half yep. of what's he gonna say. You yep. know? I think the I think the you know the the uh, OGs mm -hmm. of comedy they had more theater of the mind because they came from that vaudevillian thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, and many of them were doing venues that weren't 
comedy clubs. So there was no, they didn't have as many rules like this is how things work here, right? They were doing, they were crashing poetry events. They were crashing music open mics. Mm. And so they, there'd be people playing jazz and then they come, can I just do comedy for about four minutes? And so, so they had to, like you said, they had to design it in their head. It all came through here. It wasn't like, oh, in comedy clubs, this is how we do things. Do you think uh, the social media is helping or hurting stand-up comedy? Both. Uh, I think that it's it's helping in that you don't have to be in L.A. or New York to get a following. You can you can build a following yep. and comedy clubs will hire you because you can get people in their seats and you've never lived in L.A. or New York. So that's a big difference. It's it's hurting is that in that there's so much out there. There's so much yeah. people people putting their open mic sets. Look, I don't want my first 20 years of sets being seen by anybody. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And you just you, burn you know, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, comedy is a constant work in progress. It's mm -hmm. it's never finished. Every joke can someday have another tag or a better punchline or a different way yep. to go. So so I don't want people to see my open mic jokes. I, I, but yeah. now all your sets are up there constantly because you need to get people to watch you. So uh, yeah, so I think it's, and there's other there's other ways we could go on either side of that. But I think mm -hmm. it's both hurt and helped. Kermit, I wish we had another eight minutes to just rap about this stuff. It's just so interesting to me. And again, I'm a student of uh, stand-up comedy like you are, like James yep. is. Yep, you know? yep. I, I got to tell you, um, one more time, uh, is there anywhere we, we, you're, you're going to be in Utah soon? Yep, I'll be in uh, Utah uh, the 15th through the 18th, and then I'll be in Wisconsin on the 24th and 25th. Of March? And, uh, yep, of March, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I hope this show makes it to TV in time to help you out a little bit. Thanks for being here, Kermit. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having You know, I love you both. And so I really, really uh, was looking forward to this. And I can't thank you guys enough. Aloha, my friend.